Okay, so my name is Joy Agago, and I'll be anchoring this tutorial today for healthcare professionals, okay? Okay, ma. All right. So um, we are going to be talking about IELTS Academic, and it's divided into four um, important sessions, and it's called um, this writing, the speaking, reading, and the listening. Today, we will be talking majorly on the writing, and then writing tax one is what we'll be discussing extensively okay. today. Okay. So for writing generally, it lasts for one hour, and you have um, 30 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, sorry, 20 minutes for writing tax one and 40 minutes for writing tax two. In writing tax one, we are expected to have at least 150 words. While in writing tax two, you are expected to write 250 words at least. Now, you will be giving both of the papers at the same time. And you will be, you know, assisted as to how to manage your time, but everything goes off or you are to finish in one hour. Generally, for the writing tax, there are certain things, certain markers, certain descriptors that your examiner is looking for in your writing tax. And these have been grouped into four. They will be marking and grading you, rating you based on these four things. One of them in the task achievement, then we have the coherence and cohesion, and then we have your lexical resource, and finally we have your grammatical range and accuracy. For your task achievement, it's majorly going to be looking into how well you have answered the question within the given time, whether you did your, you completed your 150 words or 250 words, and whether you satisfied the requirements using all the devices that are at your disposal, whether you were able to introduce your task well, or whether you were able to get the main features, the highlights, and get the point that they want you to get from the question that you were given. If you are giving a tax, for instance, and it's tax one, there are certain highlights that they are expecting you to bring out from them. There are features. Sometimes they will tell you, identifying the main features in this graph or in this table or in whatever, in the map, that you should make a summary of what you have been able to see in that exam. Now, it is your ability to do the right thing, your ability to answer this question correctly that they mark in task achievement, if you have been able to finish it. For example, writing task one, we have, let's say three paragraphs. The first paragraph is your introductory sentence. The second is your overview and the third is your summary. For writing task two, it is different. Your introduction, your body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and then your conclusion. So for your writing task one, if you have been able to introduce the topic, you have rephrased it, you have used the right words, and you have written an overview, but you were not able to write a summary. It means that your task achievement is short. It's not complete. So you are going to be marked down. It's your ability to complete, finish the task using all that you are expected to use and doing everything that you're expected to do within that period of time from A to Z. That is your task achievement. Secondly, we'll be talking about coherence and cohesion. Coherence and cohesion has to do with your own logical ideas. How well have you been able to communicate your ideas to your examiner? How well can your examiner understand you? How arranged is your answer? Is there a flow in what you are writing? 
can I just have a look at what you have written and understand what is in your mind? Is your ability to arrange your work in a sequential order such that it is easily understood by whoever is marking you? For example, you don't bring in your conclusion before your second body paragraph for writing tax two. In writing tax one, you don't write a summary before you give the overview. Are you able to arrange these things in an order sequentially that makes it flow and your idea is easily communicated? That is what we are looking for in coherence and cohesion. Then we move over to lexical resource. In lexical resource, we are talking about the vocabularies that you use to rephrase the question or the words, the synonyms. For instance, when you are given a task to do, it's expected that you mark out the key words from that task and you get other meanings. You get other words that will not take away the meaning of the topic. For example, when I have school in a sentence or in a question, in a task, and I bring in learning, classroom, okay? It all has to do with learning, a place of learning, institution, educational center, okay? These are words that you can replace schools with. When I have adults, for example, and I have words like matured individual, okay? That is a word that can replace adult for me. When I have toddler and I have a child and you have like a growing person, okay? You have words that can help you replace that particular word, but do not take away the meaning of that word. Is that okay? For instance, you have number, you have amount, you have quantity, you have proportion for percentages, you have portion, a certain portion of this, a certain percentage of this, a certain proportion of this, okay? That is what your lexical resource is all about. Your ability to rephrase with the right vocabulary, showing your range of vocabularies, showing your range of words. Where you make use of adjectives, you make use of nouns, you make use of you know, adverbs, verbs, and all of them to show that there's a precision in your style of writing, okay? There's an accurate word formation to portray exactly what you want to portray in a different way. You don't take away the meaning of what I have said. You are saying the same thing, but using different words, okay? It goes to show if you have proper use of your language, lexical resource. How do you get that? You use synonyms. So, in an exam situation, and that's the reason why you need to do a lot of practice. In an exam situation, you need to mark the words that you are looking for, the synonyms, or that you need to replace for your lexical um, resource. And then you have other meanings for them written aside, so that from the beginning of your writing to the end, if it is possible, you don't even repeat that word at all. Okay, then we move over to grammatical range and accuracy. Grammatical range and accuracy has to do with your sentence formation. What kind of sentence? Is it simple? Is it compound? Is it complex? And how do you achieve this? It is with the use of words that are called linking verbs, linking words, where we have but. However, therefore, overall, in addition, furthermore, moreover. So it is your 
ability to use these words to communicate, to use these words to put out your ideas that will give you a whole writing that is legible and is understandable. Okay? Here also, you need to be very careful with your punctuations. That is, your I's, your T's, your commas, inverted commas, the use of full stop, when and how to use them. Okay? Do you have any questions so far? No, I don't. You understand what I'm trying to explain? Yes. Perfect. So now we will move to writing tax one. Remember that all of these appear in all of your writing tax, whether it is tax one or tax two. You are going to use, you are going to be assessed based on your task completion, task achievement. You are going to be assessed based on your coherence and cohesion. You are going to be assessed based on your logical and lexical resource that you have used, and then your grammatical range and your accuracy for all of your tasks, even in your speaking test as well. This will be of good use to you, okay? So for writing tax one, we have different types of writing tax one. It can be a graph, it can be a line graph, it can be a bar chart, it can be a pie chart, and it can be a map or any other thing. Usually, for some of them, they are static and some are changeable. When they are static, it's just for a particular period of time. When they are changing, is when it has to go over a period of time. For example, you can have on one graph where it gives you the sales of different items in 1990. At the same time, you may have the sales of a particular items between 1990 and 1998. That is over a period of time. This is at a particular time, okay? That way, you need to group your data. You need to know if this is static or if this is changeable. If this is over a period of time or if this is at a specific period. That way, you will know what words to use. In such, in a situation like Maybe where you have the one that moves over a period of time from 1990 to 1998, you are going to be using words like between, like from, do you understand? But if you have one that is static, those words may not necessarily be used because you are going to be describing those items as an entity at that time. But here, you're going to be discussing them like a whole because it's over a period of time. Do you understand my point? Yes. That's what I did. I got a graph. I mean, in my IELTS, I got a graph. And that's what I did. And in the course of my practice, I, I got a lot of um, bar charts and... Um, line graphs and maps during my practice. So when you have been able to group your data together, then you will identify them and you will identify what to use. If it's these percentages or numbers or whatever, you need to highlight for yourself your key points and then your overall summary and then your you write and you proofread your write-up. Okay. Okay. What have I been saying? I said that for your writing tasks, there are two different types of writing. 
but that there are things that are common to all of the types of writing. Where you have your task achievement, you have been graded for, your coherence and cohesion, and then the lexical resource, and then also your grammatical range and accuracy. And I've said that when you are writing task one, depending on what kind of question you're giving, you need to identify if you have a graph, for example, whether it is over a period of time called static, I mean, at a specific time called static or over a period of time, the one that changed. And in doing this, you group your data together, you get the highlights you want, and then you are able to write a good introduction and then your overall summary and you write your work and proofread your work. In writing tasks, you need some forms of tip, like the thinking tip, the planning tip, the writing tip, and you also have to check. Thinking tip in the sense that you need to know, you need to, you know, your brain needs to work really fast. What idea am I picking? what is in this thing that I have to take? And then you can even jot them down at one end of your paper with a pencil and you are able to pick them as you are going to write. Okay, so your planning tip, I'm going to spend one minute on this, I'm going to spend two minutes on this and I'm going to spend 10 minutes on the writing so I can have time to come back and check on my work. You need to plan. Then you go ahead and write. And if you have one, two, three minutes left, you now come back to what you have written to have a look at it and cross your T's and dot your I's and put your full stop and your commas where they all ought to be. Okay?